Hello everyone. Today's my topic of discussion is informed consent process and procedure. So these are the contents. Uh, we will discuss the definition and goal, then history, then what are the informed consent guidelines and the process of ICF, the plannings of ICF, the elements of ICF and the components. So there is our definition. It is a process by which a subject voluntarily confirms his or her willingness to participate in a particular trial after having informed uh, of all aspects of the trial that are relevant to the subject decision to participate. So basically it is a consent form to deliver the participants willingness uh, that he or she um, want to participate in a particular trial or not. So this is the goal of informed consent form that it, to provide with sufficient information that the participant can make informed consent about whether to begin or to continue the participation in the clinical trial or not. So what are the historical backgrounds of ICF or informed consent procedure? So in the year of 1891, the Prussian Minister of Interior Affairs stated that the tuberculin, the drug tuberculin for the treatment of tuberculosis must not be used against a person's will. And in the year of 1898, Dr. Albert Neiser was fined by Royal Disciplinary Court of Prussia for not seeking patient consent uh, for his experimental studies. In 1907, Sir William Oslo endorsed the necessity of informed consent in medical research. So now we will discuss about the types of consent. So there are basically two types. First is the express consent and another is the implied consent. So basically express consent can be in form of oral or written consent by the patient to undergo a specific procedure or treatment and in case of implied consent it can be inferred from the circumstances it is rarely documented and is re relied upon for care or treatment that is routine and doesn't involve any significant risk. So basically the express Express consent have the higher risk than the implied consent. So basically, uh, now we will discuss the informed consent guidelines. First of all, our uh, Indian Council of Medical Research (ICMR) um, published the guidelines, uh, the ethical guidelines for biomedical research on human subject, published in 2000, and it was revised in 2006, and. ICH guidelines was published uh, under E6 uh, under 4.8 GCP good clinical practice and now we will uh, see this a cycle about the informed consent procedure that includes comprehension, voluntariness and information. So now this is a flow chart of informed consent process that information provision and sharing by the research team. The first of all the research team basically shared, uh, shared the information with the patients or the participants. Then there will be a discussion and interaction between the researchers and the potential participants. Then after the true understanding, hmm, the there is an acceptance, acceptation or rejection of the participation. If there is an acceptation, then so there is an agreement to participate and follow up things. And if there is a rejection, there is an end of contract. So what is the plan of consent? 
so the planning of consent process uh, first of all is to identify the obstacles to participate uh, uh, in study and ways to overcome the obstacle and is to identify um, words subject that um, may not understand the plan for consent process is to compile a frequently asked question list and decide who will do the consent discussion. The discussion um, must be transparent between the researcher and the potential participants and the discussion, uh, consent discussion location uh, should be decided and uh, the plan of consent process should provide the adequate time to explain the study, uh, study or the subject. Now we will go for the process of consent. It choose the right environment and location to obtain the consent. It involves multiple healthcare personnel as necessary. It also includes the family member in the process as warranted and it ensures the subject or his legally associated representative is competent and ensure the subject uh, or the LAR has sufficient undertaking and continue the process of consent throughout the study. So who can sign the informed consent form? Though specifically, first of all, the subject can sign the informed consent form and, and also his legally acceptable representative, LAR, and the person who is conducting the review of the consent and also important witnesses who can sign the informed consent form. So these are basically the elements of informed consent. So the, there are basic elements under which there is purpose, there is risk, benefits, confidentiality, compensation, contact information and voluntary participation. And in case of additional elements, there are unexpected risk, termination, additional cost, consequences of withdrawal and new findings. Now we will discuss this uh, particular points. The purpose. The purpose is a statement that study involves research and it is basically an explanation of the purposes of the research. Basically, it explains the need of the research actually and it includes the duration, the description of the all the procedures and identif identi it identify any procedure which is experimental and in case of risk that it is a basically description that any reasonably predictable risk or discomfort to the subject and benefits it is a statement or description uh, of any benefits to the subject or to others which may reasonably expect it from the research so alternative it is an disclosure of appropriate alternative procedure or courses of the treatment if any that might be advantageous to the subject and also there is confidentiality in case of informed consent it is a statement describing the extent if any uh, to which the confidentiality of the records identify the subject will be maintained and there is compensation also for research there are involving uh, there are more uh, then minimal risk and explanation as to whether any compensation all and also an explanation as to whether any medical treatments are available if any injury occurs and if so what they consist of or where the further information may be obtained now the contacts it is an explanation of whom to contact for the answer of pertinent questions about the research and research subject rights and whom to contact in the event of a research related injury to the subject and voluntarily it's a statement that participation is voluntary refusal to participate will involve no penalty or loss of benefits to which the subject is otherwise entitled and the subject may discontinue participation 
at any time without penalty or loss of benefits to which the subject is otherwise entitled and also there is additional elements which includes the unexpected risk the termination the additional cost the unexpected risk is a statement that particular treatment or procedure may involve risk to the subject or to the embryo or fetus if the subject is or may become pregnant which are currently unexpected or unpredictable and termination is an estimated circumstances under which the subject's participation may be terminated by the investigator without regard to the subject's consent and there is additional cost any additional cost to the subject that may result from the participation in the research so there is consequences of withdraw the consequences of a subject's decision to withdraw from the research and procedures for orderly termination of participation by the subject and there is new findings a statement that significantly new findings mm, developed during the course of the research which may relate to the subject willingness to continue the participation will be provided to the subject and this is end of uh, the topic thank you